Shalom. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekak and double honest to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone that taught us this truth. Peace, love, and salutations to the hopeful like Akim that's teaching and preaching his truth with all righteousness and sincerity. This is like Yahweh Sop. Today's lesson is entitled Israelites will have slaves in the kingdom of heaven. And Lord willing, be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which are the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And as always, the sit-downs, the lessons, the street speaking is for the remnant, the elect, the Israel, or the Most High to use the gospel preached. So Israelites will have slaves in the kingdom of heaven, which the kingdom of heaven is rulership of the Israelites in earth, starting off with our Lord Yahweh Shai, which is, um, it's his kingdom, but pursuant to Romans, the eighth chapter, we're joint heirs with the Lord Yahweh Shai. So whatever he gets, you know, we'll be joint heirs with that, every man in his rightful order. All right. So uh, we will have slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let's go ahead and set the stage with um, it being an actual kingdom or a uh, empire for the Israelites to rule. And it will be a worldwide rulership. OK, it's Revelation chapter um, five. I start at verse eight. It says, and when he had taken the book, which this book represents the scriptures that we have today, the four beasts and the four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb, which which represents our Lord, Yahweh Shai, the sacrificial lamb for the children of Israel, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And that's another thing. I want to make sure you're pushing the vibration of prayer. All right. Our prayers is as incense before the throne of the Most High. And as it is written in Ecclesiastes, the 35th chapter, you know, um, a righteous man prayer pierces the clouds. All right. So our prayers, it gets straight to the most high. Verse nine. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. The seals is the secrets and the mysteries. And by Yahweh Shai playing his part in the most high's movie, him finishing the course enabled, you know, um, you know, the secrets and the mysteries to be revealed through Yahweh Shai, through the Heavenly Father. And um, those secrets and mysteries pertaining to the things that's written in the scripts will be given to the to, to, to his men. All right. And we believe wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly that, you know, it starts off with our elders and apostles of Great Millstone. It says, for thou was slain and has redeemed us. The us is the Israelites. To the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So Israelites <clears throat> will be delivered. All right. The elect. Everything is about the elect, the remnant, the Israel, the most high. The elect will be delivered out of every kindred, tongue and people and nation. Pursuant to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 16th, the 64th verse speaks about Israelites being scattered. All right. Even during the time of the diaspora. All right, you had the southern kingdom Israelites, you know, being scattered all into the neighboring countries and what they call the Middle East, which predominantly the Israelites fled into the interiors of Africa. But you had Israelites scattered. Even Acts, the second chapter speaks about Jews out of every nation coming, you know, to keep the uh, feast of tabernacle. I mean, the, the Pentecost. All right. So Israelites are scattered. All right. It says and has made us unto our power kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth all right and that was specifically for the israelites when you go to the law all right go to into the linear where is it at I'm trying to get when you go to let's see not there go to cross references real quick making us kings and priests that was allotted specifically to the israelites this is exodus chapter you see it there exodus chapter 19 verse 6 and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests in a holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel so with revelation the fifth chapter all right we're speaking about let's go back where it speaks about in the 10th tenth verse has made unto us. Salaki has made us unto our power, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's speaking specifically to the Israelites. All right. So the kingdom of heaven will be rulership. 
in the earth. And then when you go here to the second chapter in Revelation, Revelation the 20, uh, fifth verse. Now, this is a message that the Lord Yahweh Shai sent to the seven churches that were in Asia Minor, which today will make up the elect. All right. Those members that were a part of those churches are here today. All right. Through the act of reincarnation, which reincarnation is biblical. All right. So uh, these messages hold fast to the, to us to this very day. It says, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come, which is whatever measurement of knowledge, wisdom and understanding that the Lord has blessed you with. All right. You got to hold that fast. You got to keep it close because um, like I say in James, the first chapter, receiving an engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. This information is able to you know, grant you access to salvation if you endure to the end. You know, ultimately, if you predestinated from the foundation of the world to receive mercy and salvation in the latter days, all right, it's all about predestination. But the Lord Yahweh Shai did say a tree may be known by its fruit. So the elect will produce particular fruits about them concerning their faith. All right. So that which you have, hold fast till I come. You know, you you teaching, you preaching, you on the highways and the byways, you edifying, you know, you you amongst the brothers, you know, you gotta hold that fast, enduring to the end. And he that overcometh, which this word overcometh meaning to get the victory. All right. And keepeth my works unto the end. You know, it's about enduring unto the end. It says, To him will I give power over the nations. All right. So you finish your course, man, you'll get power over the nations. It says, and he shall rule them. All right. And that's including the people in these nations. Okay. We're going to, you know, certain men is going to get, you know, certain lands to, to rule, so on and so forth. And, you know, we're going to rule over the nations. And the law, the statutes and commandments, that's going to be the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that is going to be pushed forth in our kingdom. That's going to be the righteousness. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So here in the kingdom, you know, um, men are going to get authority to rule over nations. And as it says there, as a vessel of potter shall they be broken in pieces. That's if they get out of line. Because once again, the law, the statutes and commandments, that's going to be that's going to be the uh, the beacon of light in the kingdom. And if these nations don't follow after our rule, then there's going to be particular consequences. So that's why there'll be like vessels of a potter broken to shivers, because if they get out of line, they're going to get judged. It says I will give him the morning star, which is just just this information. All right. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches. All right. So that's rulership. Now, when you go here to revelate, I mean, Psalm, the second chapter. Which. Uh, Psalm, the second chapter. Parts of Psalm, the second chapter and parts of Revelation, the second chapter link up. So this is Psalm. Chapter two. Verse six, it says, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. I believe he even saying uh, Revelation. Um, speaking about Yahweh Shai standing upon Mount Zion. I want to say it's the 14. Let me see something real quick. Revelation 14 and one. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, the father's name is Yahweh, and it's through his son Yahweh Shai is how we got the connection. Now, when you read this particular verse in other translations, it speaks about the father's and the son's name written in their foreheads, which, which just basically means, you know, we're programmed through the spirit to to have the names of the Most High, but it, it says the Lamb stood on Mount Zion, right? Which Mount Zion is a uh, is a title for the Israelites. But back in Psalm two and six, yet 
have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So this is our Lord, Yahweh Shai. I will decree the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And we can read that in, Ma in uh, Matthew. Uh, Matthew, the 17th chapter for sure. And I want to say Matthew, the fourth chapter. Um, verse eight, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. All right. The actual heathen in the utmost parts of the earth for thy possessions, rulership in the earth. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, parts of Psalm, the second chapter and parts of Revelation, the second chapter link up. And we were pretty much reading the same thing that we were reading in Revelation, the second chapter, starting from the 25th verse on down. Verse nine, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So when these nations get out of line, there's going to be particular judgments. All right. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, be instructed, ye judges of the earth, which the kings of the earth, starting off with Esau, Edom, um, they're not being wise. They they abhor the teachings of Yahweh. All right. They abhor the righteousness of the heavenly father. So they got to get judged. It says, serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. The nations don't do that. All right. Kiss the sun, least he be angry, which means pay homage. It says, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but little bless are they that put their trust in him, which the elect will put their trust in the Lord Yahweh and they put their trust in the Lord Yahweh by believing in, in the things that's written in the scripts. Okay. Now, um, going back to the title. Israelites will have slaves in the kingdom of heaven, which the kingdom of heaven is rulership of the earth. And we're seeing through the, you know, through the precepts, through the spirit, how there's going to be a rulership for Yahweh Shai and these nations. If they get out of line, they're going to be beating the shivers. OK, now in Romans, the eighth chapter. which uh, the book of Romans was an epistle that Apostle Paul wrote to the Israelites that were scattered in Rome. This is uh, Romans chapter 8. Um, and 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Yeah, so we don't need no 21, 23 and me, we don't need any DNA checks tests to see if our lineage goes to the West Coast of Africa or try to link up with somebody that lines up with the, you know, the Israelites. The spirit, which is this information, it bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of the Most High. OK, that's how we know that we're Israelites, because our spirit bears witness with this information. Verse 17 and if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. So if be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified. And every brother got to bear his cross. Every brother got to deal with the trials and tribulations that comes with serving the Lord. And once again, if you endure to the end, you will be glorified with the Lord Yahweh Shai when he make his return. But the point is, we're joint heirs with the Lord Yahweh Shai. The Israelites are joint heirs with the Lord Yahweh Shai. So now, when we go here to the prophecies, let's go here to uh, Jeremiah 30. Was Jer Jeremiah, he was a Levite. And he was on the scene during, during the time of the kings, leading up to the Neo-Babylonian Empire. And um, here in um, Jeremiah 30, they have entitled it, Deliverance from Captivity Promised. So when we go here to uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7, it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right. We also, when we all like, and we always speak about this time of tribulation that we're slowly approaching. We're seeing how things is being set up by the global elites. They're allowing the immigration. They're allowing people to suffer from inflation and rising cost of living and financial problems. They're pushing out pestilences and diseases. It's causing a lot of, you know, problems in the inner cities with. You know, these migrants coming over here, taking up and using their resources. Gas is high. Rain is high. 
you know, people's going to burst soon. You know, it's going to be all out chaos in these cities, you know. So that's what the scriptures are speaking about, Jacob's trouble. And during that time, Esau, Edom is going to come down with great wrath, Revelation 12 and 12. All right. And the people that's going to be leaning upon this system and trusting in this system, once they notice that everything was lost, Esau is going to come with a remedy, which is the MOTB, the implantable technology that you buy and sell with. All right. So that's going to be a time of trouble. But the elect is going to get saved out of it. All right. Uh, verse eight, it says, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. Who have us captive right now? It's the Edomites. All right. The Edomites is the last nation of people to rule before the kingdom of heaven is established. We often quote second address six and nine. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. When it speaks about the end of the world, it's speaking about the end of an age or end of a rulership. So after Esau's done, Jacob is going to rule. He's going to be the beginning of it that followeth. So um, the Lord is going to break Esau's yoke off our neck. And it's already been broken by the anointing. You read that in Isaiah, the 10th chapter. You know, this information, all right, and us believing in it allows us to cleave closer into Yahweh Bar Shemiah Shai and come out from leaning upon him. All right, so it says that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. So we will no longer be slaves to these to these nations. Starting off with Esau, but they shall serve Yahweh their power and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them, which, like I was saying earlier, reincarnation is biblical. So, you know, we're going to serve Yahweh Bashem Shai, and this is ultimately talking about the kingdom. All right, because it's going to be the Lord Yahweh Shai's kingdom, and then under Yahweh Shai, you have particular principal men in their order. Under Yahweh Shai is King David. All right, but we're going we gonna to serve the Most High. It says, therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. And that starts off with the prophets, Amos 3 and 7. All right, I was, um, the, the, the prophets, the Lord revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So fear thou not, O my servant, servant Jacob. Fear what? This, this time of trouble, this time of tribulation. Our Lord Yahweh shall even spoke about it in Matthew, the 24th chapter. It says, Say, if Yahweh, neither be thou dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity, the seed going into the lineages of Jacob. All right, and we see that in, the, in these precepts, it's speaking about Jacob being saved. It says, And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. That's the kingdom of heaven. When, when Jake is on top For I am with thee, saith Yahweh To save thee Salvation is specifically for the Israelites Do I make a full end of all nations Whether I have scattered thee Yet will I not make a full end of thee But I will correct thee in measure And I will not leave thee altogether unpunished So the Lord going to have mercy on Jacob And will yet choose Israel It says for thus saith Yahweh Thy bruise is incurable And thy wound is grievous Going into the curses the different things that befell on us for transgressing the law, the statutes and commandments. There is none that plead to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou has no healing medicine in pursuant to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. It speaks about the Israelites, the southern kingdom going into a land, you know, uh, going into Egypt, which that Egypt is America. When you read Revelation 11 and 8, that great city is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. So Deuteronomy 28, 68 speaks about Israelites going into slave ships to Egypt, which that goes into the transatlantic slave ships in there that in there, no man shall buy you, which when you go into that word buy in the concordance, it takes you back to the Hebrew word Quanath, which means save or deliver you. So no man is going to deliver the children of Israel out of the hands of their oppressors. Right. No carnal man. Your Jesse Jackson, your Al Sharpton's, your Marcus Garvey's, all these particular leaders. Nobody is going to deliver the children of Israel from these hellish conditions that the Heavenly Father put them in due to their transgression of the law. Now, the only one that can save is our Lord Yahweh Shai. But pursuing to Isaiah 47, when he come to the virgin daughter of Babylon, which is America, ruled by these Edomites, he's not going to meet them as a man. 
He's coming as an angelic power. So Yahweh Shah is going to be the one to save the children of Israel. So back in Jeremiah 30 and 13 it says, there is none to plead thy cause. Ain't nobody going to come up and free the Israelites or put them in a better position. The only way you can get in a better position is repenting and converting and worshiping the true power, turning back, turning back to the Heavenly Father. Turn back into him, he turned back unto you. Tobit the 13th chapter goes into that. And then as you seek in the Lord, there's angels and camping from around about them that fear the Lord. Then you get the edge of protection. Then things start working out for you through the spirit. But Jeremiah 30 and 13, there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Nobody will deliver us. So it's best to turn to the Lord. Thou hast no healing medicine. But now we do. You know, when you go here to uh, Psalm 107. In 20. It says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So we now have the healing medicine, which is his information. It's truth. OK, so the healing is starting. We're being bound up those wounds, the curses, these different things, these different wicked characteristics that that, that we didn't got being over here in Babylon. You can get all that stuff healed by acknowledging the truth and following after righteousness so now we have the healing medicine all right um verse 14 all thy lovers have forgotten thee. all these religions all these lifestyles all these philosophies all these nations they have forgotten thee. they have forsaken us man because all these lifestyles that's outside the truth was set up to be a stumbling block and to lead us farther away all right. So all thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not for I have wounded thee with a wound of an enemy. See the language. I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. So it's the Lord that did these things to us with the chastisement of, the, of a cruel one for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. And that's your answer to those who say, why are we going through? Why do black people go so-called black people, which. The Israelites is blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you have Israelites that look like the heathen, and we know them by their spirit. So it's not about what you look like. It's about if you believe in the testimony of Yahweh Shah or not. So um, when people come up and say, oh, why do blacks go through these things, and why is this happening to Mexicans, and where is God, and all that? Well, the reason why these things has happened is because thy sins were increased okay we did wickedness in the eyes of the lord so the lord brought these things on us that's why we push repentance so bad all right verse 15 why cries thou of thine affliction thy sorrow is incurable like i was saying why cries thou for thine affliction oh you know god is you know is there a god why is all this stuff happening why is it all these things going on us and little babies dying and, and, and women and all hey transgression of the law which is sin cause these particular things to happen to you all right once again jeremiah 30 and 15 why cries thou not with the socket why cries thou for thine affliction thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity because thy sins were increased i have done these things unto you that's your answer all right and here's the point therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil and all they that pray upon thee will I give for prey. So, hey, all these nations is going into captivity. All our adversaries is going to get judged. All these people that devoured us is going to get paid back. And all those people that, that looked at us as prey, the most high is going to prey upon them. Verse 17, for I will restore health unto thee, which starts off with this truth. Ultimately, it's going to be us being in a position of power and rulership in the kingdom. But the restoration starts off with this information and believing in it and believing in the testimony of Yahweh Shah. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, the curses. All right. Say if Yahweh, because they called thee an outcast, saying this Zion whom no man seeketh after. It says, thus saith Yahweh, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. So the Lord is going to free us from these hellish conditions. He's going to have mercy on our dwelling places. 
Isaiah 60 speaks about the building back up of the, of, of the kingdom of Israel, of, of the land. And the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palaces shall remain after the manner thereof. So the Lord is going to build up the kingdom of heaven. I mean, build up Israel. All right, he's going to make the place of his feet gloriously, which is the whole planet Earth, but it's going to start off with Israel. All right. Verse 19, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. All right, so we're going to be rejoicing in the kingdom. We're going to be happy. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. Sex will be in the kingdom. Mosiah is going to multiply us. You know, one man shall become a thousand. It says, I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. We will not be significant. We're going to be glorified. Just read Isaiah 60. Their children also shall be as a time, strong, back in their strength. And their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all that oppress them. So our congregation shall be established. We're going to have, you know, a particular leadership. Their nobles shall be of themselves and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. All our noble ones is going to be other fellow Israelites. It's not going to be like here where amongst the, you know, the, the, the presidential administration, you got all these different nations of people coming together. No, it's going to be all Israelites. It says, and I will cause them to draw near and he shall approach unto me. Are we going to be close with the Most High? What joins us or what allows us to cleave to the Most High? Uh, the, the law, the statutes and commandments. So in our body, with the new bodies, the second covenant being in our, you know, the most high program programming us to have the law, the statutes and commandments written in our inward parts. We're going to be able to, you know, draw near into the most high. We're going to be perfect. It says, for who is he that engages his heart to approach me, saith Yahweh, and ye shall be my people and I will be your power. Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh go forth with fury. Talking about the aircrafts of the Lord. A continual whirlwind because they spin. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The, the noble elites, the ruling class elites of Esau. Mosiah is going to visit th this place with aircraft. It says the fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it. And until he have performed the intents of his heart, have all these prophecies fulfilled. In the latter days, ye shall, shall consider it. And we are considering it. You know, but this has been... We will have slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, willing we are edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the true names of the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Double honest, try elders and apostles, the great millstone and tosses truth. Shalom, Amaki.